Now we will try and build a common source amplifier using a PMOS transistor. For illustration, I will use a PMOS transistor whose mu PC aux product is 25 microampere per volt square and I will choose W by L equals 4. So, what this does is to have mu P C aux W by L equals 100 microampere per volt square the same as for the NMOS transistor. So, this is just convenient. So, we can uh, use the results that we already calculated and so on and I will also assume that the threshold voltage of the PMOS transistor is 1 volt again the same as NMOS transistor, but please do keep in mind that mu P C aux and mu on C aux will be different and they may not be in this exact ratio 1 to 4 and also this W by L if you are designing an integrated circuit is variable. Okay, You can have W by L's which are uh, very small like 1 or something and you can have thousands and even 10 thousands and so on. Okay, but we'll use these parameters for estimation. Of course, for any other value of W L, you should be able to calculate the parameters quite easily. And I will assume that the GM I need is 200 micro Siemens. So, if you calculate with this K n of 100 microampere per volt square and V T P of 1 volt, you will find that the source gate voltage has to be 3 volts okay, and the source drain voltage has to be greater than or equal to 2 volts for it to remain in saturation region. Okay. Just as with NMOS, because now voltages will be defined the other way, do not get confused. Just like with NMOS, if this voltage, if the difference between this and that becomes very small, that is if uh, the difference tends to get squeezed, then it goes into triode region. If the difference is large, it will be in saturation region. You can calculate the exact values. In case of NMOS, the drain voltage can go below the gate voltage, but not by more than one threshold voltage. In case of PMOS, the drain voltage can go above the gate voltage, but not by more than one threshold voltage. Okay. So, that is what the saturation condition means. Now, the first step is to bias it. Just like with the uh, NMOS transistor, we use constant VGS biasing just for illustration. Okay. So, we want VSG equals 3 volts. So, I will use 3 volts here and we want VSD of some value. So, let me assume that it is 4 volts. So, this will set up the operating point of the transistor in the saturation region. Okay. V S D equals 4 volts and V S G equals 3 volts and clearly V S D is more than V S G minus V T. Okay. Now, this is how you set up the operating point and let me imagine that the small signal picture of the common source amplifier is like this. I have some input source V i and just for illustration initially I will assume that there is no source resistance R s. So, V i will be applied as V g s to the MOS transistor. We have the control source G m V g s and we will have the load resistor R l and just like before from our experience we know that there could be an extra resistance here for the sake of biasing and there could also be extra resistances here for the sake of biasing. Okay. So, now the question is how to combine this signal picture with this operating point picture. Okay. We have already gone through this, so that is why I am going to go a little quick, but you should be able to again follow the same logic that we did with the NMOS common source amplifier. I 
I will also show R D because we are going to use it anyway. This is G M V G S and this is V G S. Okay. Now remember R D is what we use for uh, biasing on the drain side and R L is the load we AC couple to the common source amplifier. We have already learnt all these things, so we are going to use them. We know them and we will use them. Okay. So, first let me show this VSG of uh, 3 volts and the PMOS transistor. Okay. And to bias on the drain side, we will have this R D. Okay. And let me imagine that this is 100 kilo ohm and I have to connect the supply voltage, I will still call it V D D like that. Okay. Now, we know that for V S D equals 3 volts, the drain current of the MOS transistor will be 200 microamperes and this will be 20 volts and we wanted 4 volts across the MOS transistor. So, this V D D will be 24 volts. Okay. Now, like before, I do not want to use two separate DC sources. We know what to do. This is also generated from the higher source V D D using a voltage divider. Okay. Again, because we know all this, I will go quickly through these things. So, I will use a voltage divider across the supply and this will provide the source gate voltage bias. This is V S G, let me call this R 2 and this R 1. Then, the voltage V S G is nothing but V D D times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2, because this V S G is across R 2. Okay. So, we can adjust the ratio uh, R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 to be the appropriate value, so that we get 3 volts. That is quite easy. Okay. For instance, I could pick R 1 to be 21 mega ohm and R 2 to be 3 mega ohm and I will get 3 volts across this. Okay. In this circuit, the operating point is established. We have a source drain voltage of 4 volts and a source gate voltage of 3 volts and we have to add the input voltage and also connect the load resistance. How do we add the input? It is the usual AC coupling stuff. We have V i and connect the capacitor C 1 to couple it. So, that if you choose C 1 to be sufficiently large, at this point you will get the quiescent gate voltage plus the input voltage. The input voltage will get added to it. Okay. Similarly, the load resistance R L, which has to be ground reference, that is its one terminal has to be ground, is AC coupled to the drain of the transistor. Okay. This is C 2. Okay. And so far, I have not shown the ground for this supply voltage. In case of the NMOS transistor circuit, we had grounded the source of the MOS transistor, that is even in the operating point picture. Okay, so you, we had this as ground, and this is perfectly possible. If we call this ground, this point will be at minus 24 volts, and there are many circuits which do work with negative supply voltages. Okay, but in case of uh, integrated circuits and these MOS circuits in general, it is common to use the negative side of this voltage supply as ground, so that you think of the circuit as being operated with a positive supply voltage. So this side is ground. And this is quite common whenever you have a single supply. It is not a rule, but it is quite common. Okay. So, when you have a single supply, you think of this bottom rail as ground and the upper rail as the supply voltage. There are exceptions to this. Sometimes you do have uh, uh, circuits which run of a negative voltage, but most of the time this is what we do. Okay. So, we will still call this the ground, the bottom side, and this upper rail will still be at 24 volts. Okay. Now, as far as uh, incremental picture is concerned, this and this are both at ground. Okay, and this R L it's connected to the common reference node of the circuit, which is ground, which is on this side. Okay. So 
So that's the complete PMOS common source amplifier. Okay. I have VI and I AC couple it to this point, which is the gate and I have AC coupled the load to the drain ok. Only thing is note that the voltage here is not the source gate voltage. The source gate voltage is the voltage between these two points ok. Do not get confused by that, but otherwise things are the same ok. The small signal picture of this will be exactly the same as before. Yeah, again as I mentioned this side is what is grounded ok. In the NMOS case the source of the MOS transistor was the common reference node and in this case the common reference node is towards the drain side ok. This is because we prefer to operate with positive supply voltages ok. this is the reference node or ground ok. Now, if you draw the incremental picture of this, we will have V i and I will still show C 1. By the way, just for uh, simplicity I did not show the internal resistance of this source V i, but actually I can add it. It is not very difficult to include. So, I will have R s over there. So, that means I will have R s over here. Okay, and as far as the MOS transistor is concerned, nothing has changed. Okay, so this point is the gate, and that is the gate, and from gate to ground we have R1 parallel R2 because we have R1 over here and R2 there, and this point is also incremental ground. Okay, this is R1 parallel R2. Then we have g m times v g s. Okay. Remember the small signal model of the p MOS is exactly same as that of the n MOS when we write it in terms of v g s. And then we have r d from drain to ground, we have c 2 and r l. Okay. So, this is the incremental picture of the PMOS common source amplifier and you can see that it is exactly the same as that of the NMOS common source amplifier. And also, if the PMOS transistor has non-zero lambda, it will have a non-zero output conductance and that is included over there. Okay. As usual, it just appears in parallel with R D and R L. Okay. So, as far as the small signal picture or the incremental picture is concerned, everything is exactly the same between PMOS and NMOS cases. It is the operating point and some other large signal characteristics that will be different. We will see what they are. Okay. Now, we want C 1 and C 2 to be shorts and we have done this so many times that I will run through it. For C 1 to be a short, its reactance has to be much smaller than the resistance that appears across it when the source is reduced to 0. Source is reduced to 0, we have R s and this resistance. Okay. So, the reactance of the capacitor C 1, 1 over omega C 1 must be much smaller than R s plus R 1 parallel R 2 or this means that C 1 has to be much more than 1 over omega times R s plus R 1 parallel R 2. Okay. Now, on the output side exactly the same thing holds and I will as usual ignore this G d s, but if it is there it just appears in parallel with R d. 
the reactance of this capacitor C2 has to be much smaller than the resistance that appears across it, which is Rd plus Rl. Okay, so one over omega C2 is much smaller than Rd plus Rl. Okay, or C2 has to be much greater than one over omega times Rd plus Rl. But we also discussed earlier that this is the condition that makes sure that the voltage at the output is the same whether you have C2 or if it is really short circuited. This constraint will make sure of that. But sometimes we also need an additional constraint, especially if the value of Rd is very high. We want this voltage and that voltage to be the same. Okay, from the discussion on swing limits, you know that what limits the swing is the voltage at the drain, not the output voltage. Okay, so if Rd is very large, you could end up in a situation where the voltage swing here is larger than the output voltage. If you have that, what it means is that the transistor will go into saturation for a smaller output voltage than you originally thought. Okay, so that's why we want the drain voltage to be the same as the output voltage and the condition for that is omega C2 has to be much smaller than RL or C2 has to be much greater than 1 over omega RL. Okay. And once these conditions are satisfied, the capacitors do behave like short circuits. Okay, so that is the picture we have, and we can easily see that V naught by V i will be minus g m times R d parallel R l times the voltage division due to the source resistance R 1 parallel R 2 divided by R s plus R 1 parallel R 2. Okay? And if you do choose R 1 parallel R 2 to be much greater than R s, this whole thing will reduce to minus g m R d parallel R l. Okay? So, the small signal picture wise nothing is different. I just went through it and it is exactly the same as in the NMOS common source amplifier. Okay? Now, what is really different between uh, PMOS and NMOS stuff we will see in the following lessons. Okay?